Welcome. This video is a demonstration of the new file services capability that are now offered with Cloud and Hyperstore 751. First, let's take a look at the simple environment we deployed for the purpose of this demo. It consists of our Hyperstore object storage cluster running version 751, a Cloud and Hyperstore file service node, which provides SIFS NFS interface for users or the environment. From the client side, we have a very simple Windows 2000 workstation VM, which I'll be using for most of the demo. Also, we have a Linux VM. First, I log in to the Cloudium Management Console as an administrator. From there, I'll be able to go take a look at the cluster and see the configuration for my file node service. If I go under File Services Settings, I'll see here various uh, default settings that I can provide as an administrator of the platform to my users in the environment. These are various um, storage settings, also basic DNS information, and also some defaults in terms of SIFS and SMB functionality um, that I can provide uh, to my users in the environment. Next, I can go to the Users and Groups page and create Cloudian users that can own and manage buckets and shares for their users to use. For the purpose of this demo, I've already created a file group group, uh, which consists of users that own uh, buckets and also can manage shares and uh, provide those shares for their users. If I wanted to create a new user, I could simply uh, click the new user button enter the username, enter the username, and select uh, the file group in this case, give it a password and confirm the password. And in, a, in order for that user to be able to create and share, provide shares, I would enable uh, the, child, the file services using uh, this toggle button. For the purpose of this demo, we already have a user uh, that's already been configured. So we're gonna use that user um, for the rest of the demo. Now let's log in to the management console as the user, as the cloud user. First thing you'll notice when logging into the management console is as a user, there are less options available to me than as an administrator. The administrator obviously manages platform, has more options to manage platform accordingly. As a user, you have access to your buckets. In this case, I already have a bucket um, that's been created, which already has uh, data in it. For the demo, we're gonna create a new bucket and create a share for it as well. I'm gonna call this bucket share2 and simply create the bucket. Now under properties, I can go and enable versioning for that bucket, which is required for file services. By enable versioning, that allows us to integrate with Microsoft VSS and be able to recover uh, previous versions of files. Now that my bucket is created, I can actually go and create uh, my new share by clicking file share. We already have a file share as mentioned before, so we're gonna create the new share now, and we're gonna call that one share two. two. Uh, we're gonna use share two as the bucket for that share and we're going to create the chair. Share is created. I'm going to recycle, refresh my screen. You'll see that the share is closed. I'm going to open the share. And now you can see that my share is created and it's open. Before we go into the shares property, let's take a look at the global file tenancy settings. Some of these settings are uh, will be inherited from the administrator when it configured its uh, the default settings to provide to us. And those are all manageable and editable here from these screens. Basic DNS information, Active Directory. We can see here that's already um, a member of an Active Directory. And again, my SMB settings for mask and so on, and my NFS settings as well. I can even here add a specific client for this NFS share. 
and I can even create local users and groups outside of Active Directory if I want to give additional access um, to my shares. I'm going to close all these and go on to the properties for the share. If I click on the properties for the share, I can see various settings as storage, default settings, my key for accessing uh, my S3 buckets on the back end, some SMB settings, NFS settings. I'm going to actually uh, enable that to read only for the purpose of the demo. And also, I can see the usage where you'll see the number of files and the amount of capacity used in the share and what is also stored in the cache. So at this point, the share is open, my settings are created, I should be able to access that share as a user. So to access a share as a user, I'm going to log into my Windows machine, I'm already logged in, and I'm going to go take a look and see if I can see my share in the environment, which I can, I will double click on the share. Since I'm already a member of Active Directory, I can see uh, the share right away, uh, because my Windows machine is, is already part of Active Directory. At this point, I should be able to create a file and call it test file. Test file. And we will put some text in the file. It is a test file. And simply save the file. And we can close this file. And now you can see that I have a test file in my share. Now going back to the user management console, I should be able to see if I refresh my screen. It should show that I now have a file in my share. And uh, it's been deposited there. This also indicates that this file needs to be archived, which means it needs to be stored in uh, the, the bucket that is uh, assigned to the share. And one last thing before we go, since we have enabled uh, NFS read-only access, we will now, I can now mount, mount the share into my Linux host. I can actually display also the content of um, the directory and obviously um, should be able to read the content of the file as well. This concludes the demo of the Cloudian Hyperstore file service capabilities. Thank you.